Hello, amazing elementary students. Today I'm going to talk about how you can make this cross silhouette on the hill and how you can use markers as watercolor paint if you don't have any. So the materials I have, I've got my pencil because I always start my drawings in pencil. Um, I have Sharpie or a black crayon to make my dark silhouette. And then I have some markers just regular markers and actually it works this works really well if your markers are a little dried out so if you have some old markers that aren't so nice anymore at home that's a really good way to use those and I have a paintbrush or a q-tip so if you don't have a paintbrush a q-tip works really well so I've got my stuff and let's begin I am going to just draw my hillside And remember, yours doesn't have to look just like mine. You could draw a couple of hillsides. You could draw a hill in the background. Up to you, but always, 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 I draw my hill in pencil first. Even though we are not in our physical Immaculate Conception building, you still want to put your name in the bottom corner because if you send me your artwork, then I have it with your name on it right there. Perfect. All right, if I am making my cross, I sometimes like to use my ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, anything that has a straight edge will do. So like a book that um, is maybe a little bit older works, but I'm going to use my ruler. If you don't want to use a ruler, or you don't have one, that's okay too. But si when I'm making straight lines, sometimes I just really like to have my ruler. If I don't use my ruler, it won't look quite as straight, but that's okay too. And I could add another one right here. You could keep just one cross, or you could do all three. And remember, as you work, if you're doing this project or one of the other ones, you can always change it to make it a little bit more your own, just like we always did in art class. So if you say, oh, I really like, I really like that idea, but I want to do it a little bit different, please, please, please do that. I want to see your unique and creative vision. Now that I have my crosses in my hillside, I can either use a Sharpie or I can use a black crayon for my background. I'm going to use a black crayon because when I do my marker painting, my black crayon is going to resist the water. And we've all done a project where we did a watercolor resist before. Kindergarten, you did lines in oil pastel and then we painted over them earlier in the year, at the very beginning of the year. Um, first and second graders, you did a rainy day resist where we made rain and raindrops with white or silver oil pastel and then we painted over them. Third grade, you've done that in a number of ways over the last couple of years and so have fourth and fifth. Remember, anybody can do any of these projects. Even if you are a mom or a dad, if you want to do the projects too, super duper fun. So I'm going to color in my hillside. I want my hillside and my crosses to be black because it's going to be silhouetted against the sky. So it is only a shadow, no details. using a small piece of paper just to do this quickly. You could use a small piece of paper, you could use um, a bigger piece of paper. It works best if you're going to do the watercolor marker technique to use a paper, piece of paper that's a little bit thicker. So a piece of copy paper isn't the best choice. But you could, if that's all you have, you can totally still use that. You just don't want to use a lot of water because that your paper, when it's really thin like that, might fall apart. So I'm coloring all that in.
You'll notice that as I color, I'm coloring all in the same direction. Anytime I'm coloring something a solid color, I like to color it all in the same direction because if we color all like that, it can start to look kind of scribbly. And I feel like when we color in all directions, we don't take our time as much to fill in all of those white spaces. So I'm taking my time. Going over any little spots of white that I missed earlier. Then I'm going to press really hard to make a nice line where my hillside is. All right. Now I'm going to take my old markers. I just have some Crayola markers. Some are kind of dried out. Some are not, but that's okay. And I'm going to create a beautiful sky in the background. So I'm just coloring in lines. I'm making lines, creating shapes. Remember, you don't have to make your sky in the same pattern or the same colors as I am. I just want to show you this amazing marker technique. Some of us have done this before, but I think it's a really great solution if you don't have watercolor paint at home or if you just don't want to get out all that messy stuff. I'm going to use a couple other colors. Notice that I'm leaving some white space because I'm going to paint over it to turn my markers into watercolors. So I don't need to color every little bit of my sky because I'm going to fill it in in a little bit. I'm making sure to color around my silhouette. I'm going to switch colors. Oh, maybe a little bit more down here. Maybe a little bit of yellow, too. All right, now I'm going to turn my markers into watercolor. And so I can use a paintbrush if I have a paintbrush. A nice big paintbrush works really well. Or if you don't have a paintbrush, Q-tips work really well. I have a little cup of water. And I'm going to first show you what it looks like when I use my Q-tip. I dip my Q-tip in the water, and then I'm going to color over my markers. And they're going to blend together. I don't want to scrub my paper really hard, because if I scrub my paper really hard, especially if you're using thin paper, you might end up with a little hole, and we don't want that. So I'm just making sure my Q-tip's really wet, just like my paintbrush would be wet to tickle my watercolor paint. Your Q-tip is tickling your marker to create a watercolor effect. So I'm using my Q-tip. If I want, I can switch to my paintbrush, but because my Q-tip's so little, I sometimes feel like I have a little bit more control around my silhouette if I use this little Q-tip. So I'm going to do all the spots that are right around my crosses and my hillside. Notice, even if I color over my cross with my Q-tip, if I colored in really dark with my black crayon, it's going to resist, so I don't have to really worry about painting over it. I'm going to switch to my big paintbrush. And as I use my big paintbrush, notice how it all smears together. And I'm not scrubbing my paper. I'm using water just like I would with my watercolor paint. So if you start hearing it be really scratchy, you need a little bit more water. Remember, if you're using thin paper, you don't want to overwater because you don't want to tear a hole in your paper. I'm using just like the regular our drawing or painting paper that we use at school. I'm not using super fancy watercolor paper. If you're looking for a thicker piece of paper in your house, um, if you have a sketchbook, um, or maybe ask um, an older sibling if they have a sketchbook. The paper in sketchbooks is usually a little bit thicker than our regular copy paper for a printer. Because our copy paper, printer copy paper, is like what we use for free draw and practice in the art room. And if you can use a little bit fancier paper, I recommend it. Notice it's over here because I'm using a lot of water over here. It's starting to pool together just like our watercolor paint does. So I'm kind of just pulling that along. And 
And there we go. I think I'm done. I hope that you enjoyed this idea and you want to make your own watercolor marker painting. Have a wonderful day.